Hi, Derek here, your helpful Mackenzie friend. In today's short video, I'm going to cover your financial dispute resolution, which is the second hearing in a financial application process, and follows on from our last video, which covered the first directions appointment. I would recommend watching that if you haven't done so already, and I would also suggest hitting the subscribe button below. So today, I will cover what the final dispute resolution hearing is all about and how you can get the best possible outcome. So, stay tuned. It's not the most exciting video, however, stay with me as it is packed with must-watch information. The aim of the FDR is to negotiate with the other party with the help of the judge to try and reach a financial settlement and therefore avoid the need for your case going to a final hearing. Now you may have previously been directed to exchange offers for a settlement prior to the hearing and that part of the process has changed a little and it may not be the case for you. If you haven't been directed to make offers at this stage then I'll suggest that it would be a very good idea to do so before the FDR. Now the better you are prepared for your FDR hearing the better your outcome is likely to be. If your ex is represented, then the barrister will almost certainly produce three key documents, which will be used to present your ex's offer and position in a very favourable light. The barrister will provide his documents and present it to the judge so that he has a clear picture of the party's positions. This is typically heavily biased towards your ex, and in many cases, a total misrepresentation of the real picture. Unless challenged, the judge will believe it to be factual and will heavily influence the judge's indication given at the end of the hearing. The three documents that the various will typically present are case notes for the hearing, a schedule of assets, and a net effect of the offers. The case notes is another name for a position statement and what it is typically called in financial hearings. It should be as succinct as possible, as I'm a strong believer that in these cases, less is more. It should include a short background, the assets, that is the marital assets and those of each of the parties, the parties' incomes, their housing needs, and the respective offers made by the parties. The schedule of assets is a spreadsheet that shows the value of all the parties' assets and is really a summary of the details in the form E. And it helps provide a clearer, simpler view for the judge. The net effect of offers is a very strong document that shows the effect of each of the parties' offers and what the impact is on each party's final share of the total assets. It should clearly show for each of the parties their percentage of assets that they receive from your offer and your ex's offer. The browser's aim is to clearly show that the offer from your ex is fair and reasonable and that your offer is unbalanced and unreasonable. You know that numbers presented by the barrister are fictitious and a total misrepresentation of the true position. So, what can you do at the hearing? Of course, you can inform the judge and challenge the figures, but the barrister will simply deny that and challenge your side of events. A far more effective strategy is to produce your own documents and submit them to the court for the judge's attention. If you are physically at the court, then on arrival, you can give them to the court usher so that the judge has your documents to hand at the hearing. If you'd like templates for these must-have documents, then simply send me an email to Derek at Mackenzie Friend Consultants with an S dot co dot UK. So what happens at the hearing? 
You are expected to be available an hour before the hearing to discuss and negotiate the offers with the other party. If it is an intended meeting, then you will find a meeting room and discuss directly with your ex barrister you've represented. Or if not, then directly with your ex. Now I know this can prove to be a little bit tricky. If it is a remote hearing, then the barrister will typically call you an hour or so before the hearing. If you can reach an agreement at this stage, then great, but that is unlikely in most cases. At the hearing, the barrister will normally summarise their position, anything that has been agreed, and the differences that still remain between the parties. The judge should then ask you for your position, and you will ask if he has a copy of your documents to hand. You should refer to your documents and present your offer and explain why it is fair and reasonable for both parties. The judge will then consider the parties' positions and may ask a few further questions. The judge will then provide what is known as his or her indication. This is the most important part of the hearing. This is what he or her would order for a final settlement if the hearing was indeed a final hearing. He will inform you that his indication is what the likely outcome would be at a final hearing and that the parties should therefore give it very careful consideration so that they can avoid the stress, costs and delays of a final hearing. He would encourage the parties to discuss his indication and see if they can reach an agreement. And he will then set a time for the parties to reconvene in his court later that day to update him of how you're getting on and if you have actually reached an agreement. You will then hold further attempts to negotiate with the other party in an attempt to reach an agreement roughly based on the judge's indication. You will return to the court at the time directed by the judge and inform the judge of the outcome of your discussions. If you have reached an agreement, then the judge will congratulate you and make a final order based on the agreed position. If you are unable to reach an agreement, then the judge will order a final hearing in three months or so's time. The judge would encourage the parties to continue discussions outside of the court in an attempt to reach an agreement before the final hearing. The FDR can be quite daunting and stressful and most people could really benefit from some experienced assistance. Therefore, if you'd like assistance or discuss your case then go to www.mckenziefriendconsultants.co.uk and book your free consultancy with me. That's it for today. If you find my short videos helpful, then hit the subscribe button below. Bye for now. Stay safe. And until my next video.